Yeah, hi, Kasun. Our next speaker. Hi, Rakesh. Hello. Hi. How are you, Kasun? Good. Thank you, Kasun. So let me just quickly introduce Kasun. So I think many of you, those who are active in community and LinkedIn, might be aware uh, the Kasun, the activity that Kasun is performing for community across the globe. So he is the community leader, community member uh, for multiple user group. He is also Microsoft BizApps MVP. Okay, and he's been contributing across all the areas. So for today, uh, India BizApps Back to School Bootcamp is going to deliver one key topic, which is the landed cost. And I think how many of you? I'm not sure whether you got a chance looking into the key capability, and there are bunch of less, uh, I would say, materials are available uh, on the internet. But I'm sure Kasun today's discussion and the topic is really going to help us uh, to understand the key features in which area we are going to leverage and definitely when you try to approach your customer very first time in the pre-sale stage, right? This sort of discussions really help. So I think let us hear it from Kasun. Thanks, Rakesh. Uh, thanks for organizing this wonderful event and uh, inviting me as well uh, to speak in the event. And it's great to uh, talk to uh, speak in this event. And let's get, uh, I hope you can see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, I can. OK, great. So let's start the session. Um, so I'll be talking about leveraging uh, as uh, Rakesh told. So I will be uh, talking about leveraging landed cost module in Dynamics 365 supply chain management. So this is relatively uh, new manage, uh, new module in the D365 SCM space. And uh, it was actually coming from DXE uh, previously in add-on. Uh, uh, then it was uh, purchased by Microsoft, so it's uh, part of the um, the uh, Corpora uh, CoffeeNobs uh, as well now. So let's uh, um, let me uh, introduce myself a bit. So as Rakesh also introduced me a bit, so I've just uh, explained a bit about myself. So I'm Kasum uh, Patirna and uh, uh, Dynamics 365 and Power Platform Evangelist. I'm currently working at uh, DXC Technology as a, as a principal consultant business architect. And I started my journey uh, in uh, Microsoft uh, business applications from Dynamics AX. Uh, I've worked in 4.0 and AX uh, 209 and on the upwards uh, with the new, with the latest uh, um, D365 and FinOps as well. So I have uh, uh, really, um, close to uh, 10 plus years uh, experience, and I've also worked with the um, the uh, D365 CE, uh, CE or the ERP uh, as well, and also in the Power Platform uh, as well. So I've um, got experience in both um, CE as well as Power Platform as well. And uh, I'm active in Dynamics and Power Platform uh, communities, and I've also co-organized the um, Sri Lankan Power Platform and also Dynamics uh, user groups, and also part of the other uh, wider communities as well. And uh, also, I have a, a my own website, so it's d365bits.com. So you. I've uh, had a lot of uh, blogs on the d365bits.com and also have uh, videos in my d365bits, so you can find both in the same. And this is my LinkedIn, so if you want me to find in LinkedIn, if you have any further questions after the session or anything, you can yeah just feel free to um, send an email, uh, send a message there. And uh, so I'm also interested in cricket and hiking and running, so. If you have anything in common on those areas, or well, feel free to uh, have a chat with me. So that's fine. And let us get started on the agenda. So I'll cover on what is landed costing. So just to give you a brief idea what the land is costing and the terminology um, as well, and then basic inbound process flows uh, with the landed costing. So those ones I'll be covering. So to give you some understanding on what the the process that you have with the inbound process. And also landed costing in um, how, how it involves into the 65 SCM. So what are the required steps and demos and some of the resources I have and, and Q&A. So let us get started. So what is landed cost? Uh, landed costing is basically a total 
the total cost of land shipment, including purchase price, freight, insurance, and other cost up to port of destination. So if you see the example given, it's like um, it's a uh, laptop which is um, manufactured in USA. So it's coming back to uh, it's uh, coming through a freight uh, a ship um, to the New Zealand. And so what happens? You have a freight cost incurred per unit and uh, there will be some duty charges and then your total landed cost will be 1015 in this example so it will begin item price is 1000 freight cost is 10 duty is 5 so it's 1015 so this is just to give you a um, simple explanation on what is land costing and that's the total uh, cost of the land shipment and uh, also it also gives you a, a visibility into your supply chain cost helps to helps the companies when they are making strategic decisions and you would um, and this is relatively important these days because as you know that there are a lot of um, delays in the the uh, shipments so you can also do the tracking as well so that's the best part of it so you can do the tracking as well so some of the shipments take a longer time for you to arrive so so these things um, you can uh, get some uh, analytics out of that and you can monitor all those uh, shipments while that's in the um, in the sea or in, in freight is is there so because there are a lot of uh, delays at the moment so it's really vital for you to um, identify cost incurred as well as the the tracking part of it and um, land cost is an essential uh, way to calculate your uh, company's bottom line by representing the total cost of the product in its uh, journey from the factory floor to your uh, buyer's door. So, so that's a um, bit about uh, the landed costing, just to give you an idea, understanding on what we're talking about here. And let's look at the terminologies. So the terminology wise, we have LCL, FCL. The LCL is, if you look at the image, it can, it, it shows you that the red is actually all the shipments that we have and then the uh the the other colors blue gray and the light gray is actually other important shipment so if you talk about lcl that's the less than container load and it is the um, it is fact to the group um, of uh, several shippers into the same container if you don't have enough volume to fill in a full container load so in the left side you can see the full container load so if it's if if it's a full container load it's actually consisting of all of your shipment but if it's LCL, that means you can't fill the full FCL, so you just uh, get part of that um, the container for you. So that's the FCL and LCL, and you also have legs. So the legs are uh, important as well. So the legs is uh, each journey you can have multiple uh, legs, each of uh, which represents a step of journey. So in the example I've given, it's from USA to um, New Zealand. So maybe it might be coming to uh, Auckland port and then from Auckland port, you might have some um, inbound um, uh, transportation as well. So you, if you want to track all those activities, you can track it and they can probably have multiple uh, lakes in different countries. So it might have um, different, um, probably it might go from USA to somewhere else and then come back to um, New Zealand, so something like that. So there'll be a lot of uh, links if you want to track, you can track all those for your, um, if, it, if it serves a great um, benefit to you, you can definitely track those activities uh, under the journey. And then the voyage. So the voyage is typically a voyage is a single vessel that travels along a single journey. A voyage can contain multiple shipping containers and it can also include inbound orders from different uh, legal entities. And also you have uh, shipping containers. So the shipping containers A will be um, containing all the uh, shipping uh, goods that you have. So, and also uh, just to mention on the uh, transport management. So if you if you talk about ladder costing, ladder cost actually belongs to the transport management part of it. And um, the landed cost is actually quite useful for the inbound part of it. So if you're talking about the outbound, you can use the transport management. So that's the um, the suggestion that and the recommendation from Microsoft. So usually for the landed cost, you can use with the um, inbound part of it. And uh, 
Transport management can also handle inbound, but it, the certainly the functionalities will be different. Um, so, but the landed cost is pretty much uh, rich in that sense um, to use it for the inbound um, inbound part of the uh, part of that. Yeah. And uh, th there are some other uh, stuff as well, like uh, BAF and the bank uh, bank adjustment factor and stuff like that. So that comes into play. Um, so these is these are the costs. So there will be several costs like BAF or maybe duty, freight. Um, so there are so many uh, costs. So if you talk about if you heard about the BAF, BAF is actually the bunker adjustment factor. So that is actually uh, a term which uses that um, if if the um, if the fuel that used to operate the ships and if the fuel prices are quite volatile, the shipping line charge a fee called bunker adjustment factor. So that's what the BAF means or the bunker adjustment factor. That will not that's not in the picture, but it'll come into play when you go to the auto cost and stuff like that. You can see that. So let's look at the basic inbound process flows with landed costing. So you have uh, the purchase orders. The purchase orders are um, high high level. What are the uh, the key points or the flows that uh, in, in terms of the flow what we have? So create purchase order or orders. You can uh, have multiple orders in one wage or you can have single uh, purchase order in one way. So then after that, you can directly create from purchase order itself. So it depends if you want to create from the uh, purchase order itself or you want to probably uh, directly go to the wage um, form and then create it and then you can add PO lines and create the shipping containers. After that, you can invoice the PO from the wage so that then it it will create the GIT or the goods in uh, goods in transit or receiving depending on what uh, setup form that you are set up. You're going to uh, maintain on that and then you can do the actual invoice on the freight and the duty that you um, incurred later on. And then the transfer um, orders. So the transfer orders you have uh, can create the transfer order and orders, and then you can create the voyage record, add TO lines, and create shipping containers. So that's pretty much same as what we did on the purchase order part. And then you have the transfer order shipment and the transfer order received. So the transfer order received doesn't have that uh, GIT, uh, goods in transit capability. So that will be a bit different. And then you can do the actual invoice once you have that. Um, the actual invoice for those freight or the duty charges. And I'm not going to go more on the slides, so I'll jump into the uh, system straight away. Uh, just uh, just to let you know um, before going into the other part of it, just to just I think I'll stop from this slide. So if you want to enable the landed costs, it's actually in the I have to go to the feature management and then enable the landed cost. So that's how you can enable it. Let's Let's jump into the system and then we can have a look. Yeah, probably I will um, turn off my um, video just to keep the best um, um, streaming possibility. So let me remove the uh, video, then we can focus on the the system. Yeah. So let, this is in uh, Finops. I just um, let me refresh it and then we'll go to the uh, feature management first. So let's see where we can find that in the feature management. So you can open the feature management and can go to the all, let's say landed. And you can see this is the landed cost. So if you see that the module is actually transport management and um, even Microsoft as well supporting is part of the the transport management team for the landed cost as well. Um, so this you can enable um, from this feature management under the landed costing. So if once you enable it, you would see the enable date. So that's pretty much straightforward how you can enable it. And uh, once you enable, you would see this module appearing. That, that's the landed cost module. And then you can go to the, um, let me collapse everything and just open up the setup only. So landed cost parameters. So this is the parameters that you need to set up here. So you have um, uh, various setups here. So you can have your uh, shipping rate, or you could also provide your over delivery and under delivery. I'll probably discuss further on this one over delivery and the under delivery 
scenarios and what setups you want. And um, so this is pretty much the landed cost parameters. You have uh, various uh, setups here, depending on your uh, needs for the business. And then you have uh, status updates. So you have uh, several status updates. You have costed in transit ready for costing, pre-costed. So we'll walk through on one of the examples and see how we can track all these uh, different uh, statuses. And it's really vital to have these uh, status. So this is the final stage. Final stage is actually the costed. So this is a pre-costed and ready for costing. And this is the in transit. So that's the um, that's for the status update. Then you have uh, voyage credit. So this is for the tolerance if you have. And then you have a uh, cost estimates if you're using the uh, cost price updates. You can use that. Uh, inventory uh, dimensions and the number sequences. So the number sequences, um, this is um, these are not the shared number sequences. This will be common for that. Uh, this will be uh, specific for the entity, and this will be the common uh, or the shared uh, number sequence. That will be the wage actually. And uh, this is actually to enable the show landed cost feature in the uh, the menus. So if you go to the purchase orders or if you go to the um, trans orders, you would see different, um, I mean, landed cost related fees and uh, fields and tabs appearing. So once you enable this. So that's pretty much on the landed cost parameters. So we were talking about the voyage statuses. So this is the voyage statuses screen. So you can go set up and voyage statuses and then you can have specific uh, statuses. So so this is the this will be the last status uh, 70 costed. So there is a parent. So the parent will be linking back to the 59 pre costed. And also you can also specify these um, uh, statuses in different uh, areas as well. Yeah, and uh, doo -doo -doo, um, let's go some of the important setups I would cover. Cost type codes. So the cost type codes is the one which I was uh, talking about the BAF uh, bunk adjustment factor. So you can have um, different cost duty, freight, fuel, labels. So you can define how you're gonna. Uh, um, uh, I mean, how we're gonna, um, you know, uh, use the financial part of it because uh, if it's a label, if it's borne by the company, then you can probably have by debit and credit to the uh, ledger account specific uh, ledger account. And or if you are having duty, so you could actually, uh, so let's say probably freight. So if you have freight, you have to pay back to a vendor. So you could uh, specify the credit to a vendor. So it will depend on. Um, so if it's a credit as a vendor, then you would actually see this to be settled when you go to the purchase um, invoice journal part of it. Otherwise, if it's a label, it will be actually uh, incurring into the the um, the organization. So it will be it will not be uh, able to pay back because it will be charged back to that uh, organization. So that's why it's being set up as the ledger account. So if you have that scenario, you can put it like that. So you have. Um, Certain accounts that you need to specify clearing accounts, uh, standard cost variance accounts. Uh, if you have a standard cost, um, if you have moving average, then you can use this as well, the moving average variance account. So depending on uh, the setup that you want to have for your client, then you can actually set it up as it is. Um, yeah, that's pretty much on quick update on the cost type code. Then we also have uh, auto cost. So auto cost is what actually triggers um, certain uh, cost based on the journey templates or based on the mode of delivery. So uh, based on the cost area as well. So if you look at the uh, voyage cost area, then you have all. Um, it, it's actually taking everything. All if it's uh, for this specific uh, from port to to port, and then it'll be um, charging back this uh, BEF on percentage fixed um, to cost value. And then there are a few uh, ways that you can apportion it. Uh, percentage, quantity, amount, volume, weight, measurement, and volumetric. So depending on how you want to do that, you could specify. And not only voyage, you can put it on the shipping container. So if you go cost, if you um, want to realize these costs by the shipping container, then you probably want to use this shipping container. Then you can um, have that uh, breakdown. So this is the highest level. The voyage will be the highest level and the shipping container will be the level below that. 
And if you have a transorder, you could actually use on the transorder line. If you want to make anything part of the item, then you can actually put it into the item as well. So if you look at this 1001, so this has the duty. So it depends on how you want to set up. Based on different businesses, you would set it up differently, but the, the capabilities are there. So if you notice that the mode of delivery also you can specify, so you could have different types based on the mode of delivery. Uh, and also you can have a shipping company as well. So if you specify any vendor as a shipping company, then you can specify that. Like probably we can see it here. Let me show you quickly. So the 1002 is actually um, specified as a shipping company. So if you see Voyage and the shipping company, so it will be actually dropping down from there and then you can select it. So that's what the um, that's what the shipping company does. And when you create the voyage, also you can actually um, put in the shipping company as well. If you would, if you want to ask, if you want, if you want um, uh, your the uh, auto cost to be based on this kind of selection, like based on shipping company, mode of delivery, or maybe shipping company and from port and to port. So you can specify like that. So these are the key setups that you want to have. If you want to um, set up the uh, landed uh, custom module, and I'm just going through only the uh, the key ones, and uh, the other ones, um, I won't say. I mean, it, it'll, it's not going to be critical, but it depends. I mean, depends on your setup that you want to do it might be critical but uh, if you want to set up a basic one for you to test it out or a basic one for you to uh, show to client you can probably uh, have these key setups i show will be uh, the key ones which will be important in that setup uh, let's go to the shipping ports and see how to do that the shipping ports part of it Let me refresh it. Shipping ports. So you can specify your shipping ports here. So Auckland, Melbourne. So likewise, you can um, specify your um, ports there. And then you have journey templates. So you can have a journey template for um, individual uh, journey uh, journeys. So different journeys would have different activities to track. So in this, you're tracking the load and tracking on the um, on the freight part of it, and then the track on the custom as well as the local. So so the, the local transport. So there are certain activities that you can track and also the tracking control center will be also quite a useful uh, setup that you can also look at the blank lead time and status updates. So these are the um, the status updates that you have uh, for that. And let me check. Let me show you the. Yeah, so Auckland to uh, sorry Melbourne to Auckland. So it will take um, the delivery mode, mode of delivery is 20 and the lead time is three. So likewise, you can specify the lead times depending on your depending on your um, activities there. And it's. Yeah, that's the tracking control center, so you could be uh, another important setup. Um, so that's that that can be um, specifically you can look at like that and then also you can update the uh, this will be actually using the uh, shipping contain activities to um, update the estimated end date to the goods in transit uh, table and then target food will be expected date and there are status update as well so you could do some status update based on the shipping um, contain activities so that will be the shipping contain activities will be the source table and then based on the actual end date, then you can update the shipping, um, the status in the item or the shipping container or the voyage level. So based on based on how you want to update uh, individual statuses, you can utilize this as well. Um, yeah, journey templates. So the journey templates will be, yeah, I think we talked about the journey templates. I think the legs we haven't talked about. So the legs will be the one which is inside the journey template. So you need to have the legs in order to create that journey template so you can specify these um, legs and you also have a mode of delivery as well for those ones yeah so that's what you need to um, know 
Yeah, so pretty much I covered uh, whatever, what are the um, setups that you want to have. So if you have over or under tolerances, you could leverage on these. But apart from that, it should be fine. Um, yeah, let's go to a purchase order. Let's create a purchase order and let's look at how we can do a simple um, landed cost um, transaction and see. Let me create a purchase order. So if you are from FinOps background, I believe they will be pretty much basic. So, so you create a, um, a purchase order, um, select a vendor account, and update your warehouse then side. Sorry, I think I draw back. Hopefully, you guys can hear me now. Click yes, OK. Sir. Yeah, click OK. So you create a purchase order. A triple one. Let me save five quantities and save it. Let me show you the header. Uh, just to show you that there's a two critical uh, part of it. So you need to uh, make sure that you have, um, yeah, you can specify a mode of delivery as well as the delivery terms. So delivery terms will be the key important part of it. So if I show you the delivery terms, you have goods in transit management set up enable here. Um, so if you want to have that goods in transit feature, so what it does basically, when let's say let's imagine the scenario that we were talking about a laptop which is actually um you are um shipping from us so as soon as you ship from us if you have fob you could uh, actually take it uh, the take the ownership as well so once you take the ownership and uh what you can do is basically you could um you could pay back the vendor so in order to do that we actually can leverage on the goods in transit management and once you post the invoice uh, from the voyage itself that these quantities will be sitting in your GIT warehouse. So there will be uh, two warehouses. So you have GIT as well as the under delivery. So the under for the under delivery scenarios. OK, let me show you the uh, the setup. So that's another setup that you want to have. Um, let's go to the warehouses. Um, so if you use an advanced warehouse, so in this case, uh, 24 is advanced warehouse, and you would have the goods in transit warehouse and the undertaker. You can have for the basic as well, but I'm actually utilizing uh, using uh, advanced warehouse to show the demonstrate the capabilities with the advanced warehouse. So you have the GIT goods in transit warehouse and under delivery warehouse. And make sure that you set up uh, the GIT, the same locations receiving and under uh, uh, delivery locations. Um, and you, you have to have these two warehouses. So the GIT is where you would keep the stock once it's in the uh, the GIT process, once it's uh, in transit uh, situation. So it will be actually sitting in your GIT warehouse. Under delivery is where you have, uh, let's say, fine quantities, but actually the vendor only delivered three quantities, then the other two you may not be you know you may not gonna get it. So it will be sitting in the under delivery warehouse, and then you can decide what you're gonna do for these under delivery quantities. Whether you're gonna uh, uh, create a written PO or you would actually create a movement journal and then deduct it. Um, so that's depending on how you, how the business want to handle that. But um, so that's why you need to have two warehouses basically. Right, so that's about the warehouse. Let's go back to where we were. We were on the terms of delivery, so the goods in transit management. So you make sure you have the delivery terms mapped out, um, especially if you want to leverage on that GIT capability. Let me go to the lines and I'll show you some added fee. Um, if you recall on the uh, landed cost parameters, there is a enable uh, feature visibility uh, setup. So once you do that, so you would see these fields appearing. Um, 
and then uh, we have the uh, the voyage. Um, so the voyage, uh, basically, you can see all the if if you have a, if you create a voyage, then you will see the voyage as well here. And uh, let me create a voyage now. And before that, I would also tell you that um, under the purchase order, you would also need to make sure that you confirm the purchase order. Otherwise, when you try to post the invoice, then you will get a message as well. So make sure you po confirm the purchase order. Yeah and then create the new voyage. Um, in this case, I can give you um, the purchase order, booking reference, if you have any booking reference, and then the uh, vessel and the external uh, voyage ID if you have, then we can have a journey template. So this is the journey template, and you have the uh, mode of delivery, so the mode of delivery you could actually uh, put in the um, seven, uh, 17 in my case. And if you want to have a shipping company, you can have a shipping company, but otherwise, yeah, it's fine. Don't need to, uh, you would need to uh, have that mode of delivery. Uh, sorry, I had need, don't need to have the shipping company, basically. So let me select this. Um, so basically you could, uh, uh, select and then if you want to update so in this case only one only one and in that case it's fine uh because i want to take everything but if not if you want to uh take only um, partial of the partial quantities then you can update it here yeah so depending on how you want to uh, select you could basically update it and you can if you have multiple lines then you can select which lines you want uh, to go ahead with this uh voyage yeah and another one will be if you are working with uh product dimensions then these dimensions will be also uh will be useful if you are dealing with size and color in term in case of um example like uh t-shirt a, com a product company or a, a company um probably a, um, manufacturing shoes and stuff like that so this will be very vital if you have product dimensions then you can enable those when you select it so when you are selecting the line, it will be very much useful. And there's a setup as well. So you can see the purchase orders, trans orders, and you can restrict if you want to restrict to your site, you can do that. And there are certain um, uh, certain filters as well. So it will probably look like the arrival journal, if you're familiar with the arrival journal, item arrival journal. Um, so that's the, uh, that, that would uh, look a bit uh, similar to that and connect to the staging list and then you can view the staging list after that and let me create multiple shipments in this case so let me create two um to a new shipping container so i'm just saying this will be coming in this so the other one i i think haven't go through the shipping container so usually use the shipping container if you own the shipping containers otherwise you can manually type it in so let's that probably probably let's manually type it in it's fine so just to demonstrate so uh, you can manually type it in and then you have a journey template you have a shipping date if you have a ship date you can mention it otherwise it's fine um so let's say this one is uh, 20 fcl so i create the um Yeah, I created the um, voyage and I have three more quantities left. So probably I'll create another uh, shipping con container or if you want to add, you can add to the existing shipping container, but I would use add to the new shipping container just to show um, another uh, scenario with um, twenty. Yeah, let's say twenty FCL is fine. Yeah, I think I've selected. Yeah, so it's good. So, so I created the wage. I have two containers, shipping containers here. Uh, one is three and one is two. Yeah. And um, so the next step. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's show you the uh, transactions as well. How the transactions would look like here. So you can see one liner here, right? and let me let me post the invoice um yeah just before posting the invoice let me go through the other ones and show you 
let me let me keep this for a bit let's go back to the tracking to show you the tracking so this is the tracking so you have the tracking um so basically you have uh okay let me show you just you won't see that um the shipping yeah let me add the shipping container so it'll clarify it'll show you they are uh, Yeah, so there are two shipping containers. So basically, um, so that's why the V H8767, right? So, and then the other one is the VH90909. So if you want to update one, you can actually, uh, flexible in this form, you can select. So you just need to add this shipping container for you to get, um, get it updated like that. And you can see that let me show, <clears throat> let me put in the start date. So let me show you the start date is 18. So that's only updated for that specific uh, shipping container. So I can do for the other one as well. 18, so this is just to track on those ones. So you can see the estimated date. So that's actually coming from the tracking control set that I was showing earlier on the lead time. Uh, yeah, so these are the two containers. So you can update the uh, dates. You can put in the actual end date. I'll say actual end date would be so I just update 20. So if you see once I update it, so if you see that my estimated end date also got updated because I updated different date here, right? Uh, let me go back. I'll go back and show you the PO as well. So because we have three and two different um, um, quantities on the different uh, containers, and if you notice that it's been actually separated as well. So this is the main line and this is actually separated to two lines. So let me show you by the, if you go to the update lines, delivery window lines, you could see I have five quantity and that's the initial line that we had. And this is the two lines which is actually separated. And you can see the delivery window three and two for those lines here. So this is, this is that. And, um, da -da -da. Um, yeah, you could also see that the landed cost updated the void and also the status as well here. Yeah, so this is as well. And if you see the main line, it doesn't have anything linked to it. So that's the main line which actually separated the two lines. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So you can uh, track and I think I'll show you the cost inquiry as well before I post the uh, invoice. So the cost is actually freight 400 400 so that's actually for different for the uh, the voyage so if i go to the voyage cost you wouldn't see anything here because it's actually charging from the let me show you the auto cost so let's go to the auto cost so if you go to the shipping container you would see that uh, uh aumel a KL and is it so this is actually using this uh, shipping container so it's actually the cost is not in the voyage level it's actually under the shipping container level so that's why that's why you wouldn't see anything here but if I go to the shipping container and go to the voyage cost you would see that yeah that's the 400 right so hope you all got that point as well so Again, if I show the cost inquiry, so it's 400, 400 for the two, uh, two shipping containers, yeah. If you have any other costs, you can actually add it as well. But in this case, I'm just gonna go with this too, yeah. And let's post the, let's go to the manage and post the invoice. So if you're doing the first time, basically uh, you would need to um, make sure that this is ordered quantity. Otherwise you wouldn't see any, any line here. And also you need to make sure that you can't do the three way match. It's only the two way match you can do. So you have to do the match, match is passed and then post it. So once you post it, we'll see the lines.
Yeah, let's post it. Uh, let's go to the transactions. Yeah, so you would see all the lines coming appearing here. So previously, if you notice that there was only one line. So since I posted the invoice, uh, it actually uh, you can see the cost amount coming in as well. So it's actually in the 24 GIT. So that's where the GIT is used. So you paid back the oil, uh, the, uh, the vendor in the PO. You could do that. And then at the same time, you take the ownership and it's actually sitting in the GIT. And you could do the uh, the next as the next step. You can actually receive this. So since this is uh, um, for the basic warehouses, you can use the create arrival uh, journal. Also, it should be workable for the advanced as well. But uh, at the moment, there is a bug in I can't remember which version it will be fixed. Uh, probably 10.0.22. Um, if you want to know, uh, just please ask me back because I can't remember which take exact version, but there was an issue uh, that it's not working in, I believe, in 10.0.20 and 19. I think it's not working. So this is the uh, item arrival. This item arrival journal will, work, will be working for both uh, basic and advanced, but at the moment advanced is not working because there's a there's a bug in uh, previous versions, but I think it will be fixed in the, the future versions. In, I think it's 21 or 22 will be fixed. Um, so that's uh, that, that's where you can do the create arrival journal. That's the um, the basic um, receiving part of it. But I'm going to use the advanced. So let's look at the advanced uh, warehouse. Um, I'm going to use the emulator since I don't have the uh, the link to this one for the app. But you pretty much would get the uh, the same thing. Uh, I mean, the 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 user diff, uh, experience will be different, but I mean, the pretty much the functionalities would remain same. Um, the okay, so this actually the standard how it comes, it's a two two step. Um, I'll show you the two two step first. Um. So let's look at the first wage. Let's take the first one. So I'll go to GIT receive. So GIT receive. I could get the wage and you get the shipping container. So you can get the shipping container like this. So I'm going to use the, the three quantities first. It's a low one. And this will be, uh, so let me see how many, three. Okay, so three quantities, uh, let's say I'm going to receive more, more than three. So I'm just going to show you the over delivery as well. So you are about to complete an over receipt, so I'm going to say yes. That's fine. So, so at this moment, you can't do that with the one step receiving this method. You can't do the under receive at the moment and complete it. So that's the one you need to make sure. So you can do over receipt, but you can't do under receipt. You have to come back and close it out. But um, there is a there's an issue as well in the one of the versions. Um, if you try to close it out using the receive goods in transit, but I'm gonna, not going to touch it up on today. But that that will be also fixed around I think 21 or 22. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's done. So once you complete this GIT received, so they okay probably might be wondering what is this um two-step method i was talking about so i'll just go to the mobile device menu items first um sorry menu items um G -I -D. so you have the git receive this one so this is the one git receive and then you have a git put away Basically, um, so this is the GIT, uh, uh, GIT um, receiving part of it. Uh, you could do receiving and put away. That's actually in the preview. Uh, that feature is in preview. And I'm going to do a blog about it as well. So yeah, just watch out that. Um, probably I might uh, show you quickly on this feature. So this this is actually it's in preview still. GIT, um, goods in transit item receiving and put away. And you can also complete the container as well from the, the warehouse, uh, the mobile app menu. 
Right, let's go. So the two step I'm talking about here is the GIT receive and the put away here. So I've done the GIT receiving part and let's go back to the work so that we can show the generated work here. Let me go to the all work so you can see that. So if you go to the all work, you could actually see this. That's the uh, that's the work which is generated. Yeah, let me go inside and show. Yeah, so that's the one. So you have um, uh, four quantities because I said four quantities, so that's why it's showing four quantities. And let me go back and so this, so I did the GID receive and then the GID put away. So I put in the work ID and then complete it. So it just does. That's done. Yeah, so that's done. So I'll show the other line probably with the um the one step method so but this is in preview just to remind everyone this is in preview uh gid receiving and put away so i'll go back to take the wage so should i receive it away wage id is not valid sorry this one one yeah the shipping container i think i have two quantities so i'm gonna do one only And then I can say shipping container complete. So that you won't be able to do with the other one, the two step. Yeah. So actually, I did down the receive. So, so I pretty much completed this. Um, I can show the under delivery and go to warehouse management. Sorry, uh, let me go to the landed cost and or under transactions. So you would see that two lines. One is actually for the over delivery and the one is for the under delivery. Yeah. So you could actually uh, take your actions from here. Moment or purchase order. Similarly, this one as well. Moment of purchase order. So you can decide whether you're gonna, uh, if it's a uh, under receiving, so you can decide whether you're gonna create a uh, return order and then charge back or you can consume to you uh, by using moment channel. So it'll depend on how the business want to handle. So that's basically the over one the transactions there. Uh, and yeah, we did the receiving, so that's done. So we go back to the uh, invoice journal and pay back the uh, free charges. Yeah, so uh, let me. I saw another question coming in. You want to see the partial receipt, please? Okay, let me show the partial part of it as well so you can see the transactions. Um, I show the both transactions. So this is for the uh, this is for the um. This is for the under delivery, but uh, the the transactions would look similar. You only have the GIT because you it'll be sitting in the under delivery warehouse, and then you will be taking action for that. And if you look at the over delivery, um, you would see that will also look the same because you still need to take the action on the um, on that side. Yeah, for that. I'm looking at from the voyage for your perspective. 
Uh, I think it's 800. I, got, I think it's 800. So probably I'll say 800. Just to show a scenario which we can we can post. So it'll be your uh, freight vendor. So I'm just going to use something here, probably parcel carrier, but it might, yeah, just to, that will be your freight or, I mean, the charges that you're posting, whether it be freight or the custom. So the vendor you'll be selecting base, uh, basically based on that. Um, 20 and And then you can go to the functions, select voyage cost. Um, you can select the, I think the last one. So the weight would show all together. So in this case, the sampling, I think no cost. So I'll say 400, two for this one. Uh, probably let's say 403 for this one. And 401 for this one, right? And there's nothing remaining. And then click OK. And then I can post it. Just before that, I'll come back to this to show. Oh, it's already posted. Yeah, I was too late. So, um, so actually, the the if you, before prior to posting that, you would see these two lines at zero. So you'll only see the estimated cost, but you now you can see the actual cost as well. And um, there are set certain stages, and you can actually uh, complete these uh, stages as well. So you can mention you can do, um, document received in transit, already costing and the costed. So so there there are certain um, St um, statuses that you can update, and that the, the, the final state, uh, final status will be the costed status. Yeah, so you can update by the costed and financial date, and clicking OK, that would update that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I'm covered those, but I'm just um. Yeah, I showed the partial delivery as well. Um. Yeah, let's go back to the uh, voyages, all voyages screen. I'll show some more. So if you have the last status, that will be the 70 costed. So this will be the, the final sta uh, status that you have. So there are certain status that you have, so you can update those statuses. Um, but, um, I think, okay, I think the one I think I haven't showed is the um, work template which would be another um, work template is another setup that you would need. And the location directives. So the work template will be the goods in transit. So that's the work template you would need to have. And then if you put location directive, uh, location directives, you would need to have the goods in transit. So that's the goods in transit there. For the advanced warehouse so basically um you can do two step and the one step so i think i'll show what is the one step method but that's in preview still um go to oh, thing it's uh, yeah goods in transit this is the one goods in transit and put away that's in preview still. So that's the one which I use, goods in transit and uh, receiving and put away, basically. Um, yeah, I think pretty much I covered what I wanted to show. I'll quickly go jump back to the slides. So I think I'm going through this. Uh, it has shown the voyage statuses. So that uh, voyage statuses, um, help you to update uh, different statuses in shipping container for all your purchase orders and you know item and cost type codes i went through auto cost i went through uh shipping ports tracking control center uh, le uh journey templates legs and warehouse uh setup changes as well and okay the one of the things i think 
is the posting as well. So you have a landed cost goods in transit that posting account as well. So that's another setup, which if you want to set it up and then you need to have a GIT work class as well. I mobile device menu items are covered, location directives covered. So you could have, yeah, you could look into these uh, uh, resources. And uh, also I will have that, um, I'm working on the the new blog as well on that new feature, so you'll be you'll see that as well. So if, yeah, stay stay in touch with the D365 bits, then you can find more. So yeah, any questions? Apart from I haven't uh, let me see if there's anything I haven't answered. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, has one question. Yeah, hi, Visti. Let me just quickly unmute you, Visti. Hey, Rakesh, actually, yeah. I think he showed that transaction for partial receipt, so okay. Oh, good. Yeah, I saw the question coming in, so I've used that. Yeah. yeah. Good. Is there anything I didn't answer? Could it be? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else? Any questions? Yeah, please feel free to ask think, if you have any I questions. I think we will give two, three minutes more because yeah. I can see a couple of participants joined in between your session and it's a good amount of participants more than 10 so we'll allow two three minutes yeah sure yeah and um thanks for the organizing rakesh and yeah you can definitely uh, if you get engaged uh, with this uh, event you can then you get a chance to get these books i believe right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> thanks to Pawad, lipi sarkar and vini bansal yeah it's two great books yeah uh, Definitely worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we can take a pause now if there are no further question, uh, Kasun. And thank yes. you so much, Kasun, for being with us. It yeah, was really you. great Thanks, session. Rakesh. Let me tell you very frankly, when I started learning, right, I was literally lingering around uh, because the concept was uh, pretty new, right, in terms of solution, yeah. in terms of business. And I have seen a couple of your videos, not for this, but the previous one, which you have given, right? And that actually helped a lot. Yeah. And now this okay. is a more granular information that currently you share. So I think I can yeah. see a lot of information and it's going to be beneficial for all of us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Rakesh. Thank you, thank you Kasun. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks.